Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by Markify. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Valeski, and we have Paul Maladjanovic on the line. He is the author of Stock Investing for Dummies, also known as the Raving Capitalist. Paul, how are you doing this morning? Oh, thank you for having me on board. I uh, wish a happy new year to all uh, when our son of our voices here. Okay, so... 14, at least with two days left, we got a little red on the screen right now, but with two days left in the new year, looks like we're going to have some pretty decent gains for the S&P 500 as well as the uh, old indexes. But the question remains for 2015, what is the raving capitalist looking for? Well, right now, as uh, as uh, many of your uh, the listeners and viewers, etc., were uh, watching, uh, you know that the Dow had hit 18,000, and it seems like stock stock indexes had a great year. And for 2015, you know, yeah, there there is a caution. I mean, obviously, very long term, I'm uh, still pretty bullish, uh, but in the short term, there are a lot of pitfalls. I mean, it's at some point. You're going to see more difficulties start to kick in uh, for the economy as new regulations and new laws kick in. You know, I know that the, the new health care laws, uh, some of the penalties are start hitting with that. And so a lot of uh, that's going to have a, a real depressing effect in terms of uh, uh, jobs. In other words, for the economy, I see uh, beneath the surface, uh, you know, um, like, like a death of a thousand cuts, basically. You know, not well, I don't want to put it that extreme, whatever, but, you know, a lot of things that will be a drag on it. And uh, in the meanwhile, this is part of the reason why both the Federal Reserve and some central banks across the globe are doing a lot more uh, stimulus pumping. So it's one of those anomalous uh, economies in 2015, the, uh, the stock market. I mean, many years ago, the stock market used to be a, we a bellwether. You, uh, you looked at it and says, oh, well, if it's going up, that means that many investors are optimistic about the economy because they look at it at the economy. But it's a skewed picture now. Uh, a lot of the impetus is not because of the economy doing that much better. Uh, it's because the Federal Reserve has been pumping in a lot of money. So I feel that the stock market is, uh, going into 2015 is pretty toppy. Uh, I think that uh, people, this is a, a good time as any for people to start reviewing their portfolios. I, uh, I mean, I am the type that I like to see people be more uh, defensive. Uh, as you know from the last interview we had, uh, I love dividend payers. I like defensive stocks uh, because anything else, you don't know when a whipsaw effect is going to occur. Uh, right now, the IPOs have been uh, uh, you know, at an all-time high in terms of issuance. You know, or certainly a, a, a generally a short-term record high. So for me, when I see ebullience everywhere and uh, bullishness and optimism, and people are ignoring the underlying fundamentals because they are cheering the fact that the uh, the Federal Reserve will keep spiking the punch bowl, so to speak, with more liquidity, I think that that's when you start seeing more volatility kick in. So I think there's a, a better than 50-50 chance in 2015 that there's going to be you know, some type of sharp pullback that we'd have to be very careful about. So uh, what, what, what is my message to investors and speculators? Well, for investors, again, I, you, like they say in real estate, location, location, location. I think in investing, it's quality, quality, quality. Uh, don't pick stocks because they have a hot name or, a, or they're a sexy theme. Stick with the fundamentals. They'll always win for you in the long term, even if they might pull back in the short term. Now, for speculators, uh, the things that I like in terms of uh, those people who want to be more aggressive, and again, speculating, I make a huge distinction between investing and speculating. For speculators, uh, I do think that the, uh, the, the metals should have a uh, so, so start a strong comeback, and I made that forecast way back when, but I think that uh, we're going to see that. And in addition, for the stock market, I think that the, uh, some of the speculators out there should start looking at overpriced stocks. Uh, for potential pullbacks, maybe there's some good shorting opportunities and selective companies that are up, not because of fundamentals, but because of uh, euphoria. Okay. Long thought, but I hope I hope I got through. No, <laughs> I mean I, you know, we've only had you show on the show I think once before, so you know I don't need to want to do any revisionist history here. But I mean, how, wh what were you looking at at the end of 2013? I mean, did you did you have a similar stance, or were you a little bit more bullish, or you know how how were you sitting a year ago? 
Well, let's see here. I um, I, I didn't make any specific, uh, you know, f- uh, forecasts or recommendations in the year 2013. I was looking that during the time frame of 2014 to 2015, that they would be. Um, I had one video out where I was uh, looking for a potential uh, reversal of fortune, uh, and uh, I, I do think that the uh, like things like such as the, the metals and uh, some other hard assets. We're going to be, you know, on the offensive and be uh, at higher prices by potentially the end of 2015, and that the stock market uh, will have, uh, I think, some problems going in. I think they're going to keep on pumping it, but at some point, uh, the the fundamentals for the underlying economy will have to kick in, and I think that's when we might have some potential pitfalls. So, what? How should investors play it? I mean, uh, gold is, you know, it hasn't been a sparkling investment; doesn't pay a dividend. Uh, you know, the gold miners. I mean, how how do you? Act, I mean, do you do you buy a basket of commodities? I mean, how should investors play it this year? Well, the thing is, this, uh, my favorite between gold and uh, silver, as some of my other readers uh, know, I, I like silver because now it's about it's probably the most underpriced uh, asset on the planet, and uh, um, I guess I would, uh, the, my, my favorite way of doing it is uh, companies like the royalty companies, you know, such as the uh, the silver Wheatons of the world. Uh, and again, you know, whoever hears it, the stock symbols, they want to do their own research is uh, SLW, and of course, review with their. Uh, uh, this advisor? is my favorite speculative choice, and that's one that they should be reviewing with their financial advisors if it's appropriate for them. Okay. What about this move in oil? Is there any chance that this oil is going to rebound at all? Made a new low for the move yesterday. Um, our previous guest, Ben Carlson, just talked about, you know, I asked him about leading sectors for the year, and he made a very interesting point that not since 2004, 2005, has the same stock been the leading sector two years in a row uh and he's looking what his best you know guess was whatever was out of favor in 2014 while the oil stocks uh, at least at the second half of the year were very out of favor is that a little bit of safety in their portfolio you think or you think it's still still risky with uh with oil not finding a bottom yet i mean i will i would probably wait till the second quarter for the investors among us uh, because I think there will be a, some stabilization going on, and you want to find out which of the companies that are continuing to profit at these low levels. And so we might not find out, you know, on some clear indications about this until the first quarter of 2015. We see some financials of some of these companies, because if we see that, when we see which of the strong players with these lower prices, then we can make our investing choices. Now, for for, for those out there who uh, like my favorite play uh, with the with the pullback in oil. Uh, and energy across the board. I happen to like utilities because, in many cases, they're the ones who are doing the processing, and uh, you know uh, they will they could easily benefit from some of the lower lower oil prices. Because let's face it, no matter where oil is, you know people will still need to pay their bills. And I think that's a, it's a good time to pick up some quality utilities during the first quarter of uh, 2015. Again, this is something to discuss with their financial advisors. Okay, and uh, you know what about you know a stock like Apple? You know, one heck of a run. Uh, you know, is there is there any safety in a stock like that? I mean, the numbers are sure bearing out. You know, on the strong side of it. Do you think that you know that may be a stock that if you know we do get? Is there any stocks that you think if we do get a substantial correction that may be immune to it? Well, my. Uh, uh, my 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 favorite issue here would be for general technology, and I would prefer like a, you know uh, some of the ETFs that are that are out there that would uh, cover this uh, sector. I, I don't have one off the top of my head because I'm still researching. Because I like to look at ETFs and see what their top ten holdings are to see if they are in sync with the kind of uh, fundamentals that I'm looking for. Uh, but I think for uh, technology, I like to, I, I like technology and I like biotechnology because I think that a lot of the things going on across the uh, the last 12 months, I think bode well for a a subsector of the healthcare sector, which would be uh, I think biotechnology, especially some of the more mature issues that are out there, uh, like uh, uh, Gilead, which I think how do you pronounce it? Uh, Gilead. G-L-D, yep, yep. You know, which I which I think is, is a good way to play technology because let's face it, you know, where, uh, many times when people see some of the political issues that happened during 2014. They have to say to themselves, they should be looking at the political issues of 2014 and ask themselves, well, what does that bear in terms of supply and demand for products and services for 2015? For example, when you have uh, last year, 
concerns over everything from Ebola to uh, you know the uh, the immigration crisis down at the uh, the southern border. What does that tell you? There'll be more uh, spending on uh, health care needs for a lot of those folks out there, which means the beneficiaries will be those companies that are going to be prov- providing the kind of technology and the medicines and infrastructure spending that you need to cover this. All right. Again, I, I generally stay away from health care insurers because I think there will be problems and issues with that until the dust settles, maybe a year or two from now. But in the meanwhile, the beneficiaries of the spending in terms of products and services in health care, and a lot of that's tied to, bi- to biotech and ways to save costs and, um, and, and take advantage of some of the excess demand for, for, this, for the underlying services, those are going to be the beneficiaries. So I like biotech and some of the uh, medical suppliers uh, for 2015. What do you think the biggest mistake um, investors make? Let's say, let's go with new investors. Like, let's say you, you just graduated college and, you, you know, you're making a nice salary, got a good job and stuff. What, like, what kind of suggestions do you have for them? And what do you think the biggest mistakes that uh, new investors make? I think the biggest mistake new, uh, new investors make is really, uh, you know, how do, how do you call it? The uh, shiny object syndrome, all right, where... Uh, they, you know, they'll, they might do their homework in terms of finding a career, but they won't do the same homework in finding, you know, the uh, where the the money of their career going to go into. Um, uh, you know, how often will people take a stock because uh, you know their friend got into it, and it's too easy to too too easy to do that. And uh, you feel because it sounds good, because it sounds hot, because it ran up, you know, the last month. They won't look at things such as, you know, the earnings. Are they growing their sales? Are they growing their earnings? You know, I mean, the, the, is their is their industry continuing to expand? They they will uh, they will not do some of the hard homework involved with making their choices. And uh, and then what ends up happening is that even if you're investing in a good stock, if you don't know what's happening behind that stock, then it's the same as being a speculator. And so uh, so very frequently, investors because they're chasing you know those uh, shiny objects in the uh, in the stock market. They don't do their homework, and then they turn into being invest, going away from being invest investors. Because investors look at the company, speculators and traders look at the stock price and uh, you know where it's trending with volume, et cetera, and so forth. And then they get burned, you know, especially in the short term. Because even you know the, the best investments can uh, can can go down and the worst investments can go up. But over a long time frame, if you've chosen wisely, 99 times out of 100 your stock will go up or your choice will go up in the long term. So it's, it's, it's that case. They're not doing their homework and they're chasing bright, shiny objects without uh, uh, seeing what's behind the veneer and, and all the glitz. Yeah, and uh, who would you say, like, uh, you know, you've obviously patterned your investment style, you know, you've created a lot of on, on your own. Like, who, who, do you, who do you most closely resemble? I mean, you sound pretty conservative. You got the... You know, looking for the gold rally. I won't call you a Joe Granville or, or anything like that. But, you know, who, who are people that you look up to and respect their advice in the markets? Well, let's see. I, I think that, uh, well, obviously everybody mentions uh, Warren Buffett, and I certainly like his style. You know, I like uh, folks out there like a Richard Young. I think he does a good job, you know, with uh, some of his uh, you know recommendations. You know, uh, I uh, I like some of Peter Schiff's big picture commentary. You know, I like uh, some of uh, Stephen Liebs. Uh, in terms of the precious metal sector, I like folks like David Morgan. You know, so there's a batch of names that I have. Uh, you know, I like Mark Skousen. I think some com- comes out with some good research as well. So there are names out there that, uh, you know, I, I've known for many years, and uh, they've uh, they've proven their worth in terms of their overall uh, pick. You know, they, they have more winners than losers over time. So definitely. And you know, when you, when you mentioned about Warren Buffett, I think it, in in my sem- in my seminar, the fifty dollar wealth builder, when I tell people about investing. You know, and when I tell other folks about what their approach should be, a good when you know when we mentioned Warren Buffett, it's a great example. You, 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 the second uh, the second pitfall for many investors is that they don't have the patience, you know, to to get through. You know, people forget that Warren Buffett, many of his stocks, he sells literally for decades. You know, and they say so. Everybody wants his results to be a billionaire investor, but nobody wants to do his process. You know, so uh, patience is another one. So a lot of these folks uh, will show the patience that it takes to get through the ups and downs of the short-term market and then generate those long-term winners. 
And uh, are you going to, you mentioned Peter Schiff there. Are you going to tune in on Friday? We got Fed Friday coming up. Rihanna's worked real hard, put a great guest list together. We're going to be talking about interest rate. Garrett Cook is going to join in the conversation. We're going to talk about fundamentals. Are you, you going to tune in for a little bit on Friday? Oh, absolutely. I would have, would have, can't think of a better way to start off my year. You know, it's always, you know, you, whoever you're listening to, you can always pick up some great knowledge. I, I consider myself more of a student than a teacher. So, no, great to hear that. Yeah, we picked up some good knowledge from you today. Thanks a lot for joining us on the show today. I'm going to do it one more time. Paul Malad Genovic. He is an author of Stock Investing for Dummies and the Raving Capitalist. He's joined us here on Benzinga's Pre Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. Thanks a lot, Paul. Have a good day, and I will be looking for a question or two out of the chat from you on Friday. Happy New Year. I wish everyone continued success. Okay, thank you.